Is Hammurabi's code the oldest written law in the world? Today we're going to find out. How's it going everybody? Welcome to Virtual History 360. I'm Mr. Wade and I'm here to help you understand history just a little bit better. So be sure to subscribe to keep up with my newer videos. You know, I try to put out at least one or two a week, so make sure you're keeping up with them. And also check out the awesome history merchandise like shirts, hoodies, and masks found in my Teespring store. Check it out. I'm going to put a link in the description for you. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video to find out if Hammurabi's code is the oldest written law. But before that, here are three things you need to know about the code itself. Number one, there were cruel punishments. Now, I don't think I can start a video about Hammurabi without talking about the elephant in the room. You know, I'm sure you've heard of an eye for an eye. These were laws of retribution and retaliation. You know, some examples. If you broke somebody's bone, then your bone would be broken. But if it were a capital offense, then you could be burned alive or even impaled. Another example that kids living in Babylon might want to remember, another example is that if a son hits his father, then the kid's hands get cut off. Now, what if the crime could not be proven with evidence, only the word of another? Then they used what was called trials by ordeal. The accused would be put into a deadly situation. If they survived, then they would be pronounced innocent. An example would be being thrown into a river. If the person accused drowned, then the accuser would get their property. But if the person accused were spared by the gods and survived, then the accuser would be executed. Sounds pretty tough, right? Well, it was, but there were some pretty innovative ideas to come with this code as well. Like the idea of presumption of innocence. That was pretty radical for the time. It is a precedent that still holds true today. You know, the idea that you are innocent until proven guilty. And what about if two people were in a dispute? Instead of just fighting, they would bring their case and any witnesses in front of a judge for a decision to be made. Sound familiar? Number two. For as fair as they tried to make these laws, the punishments varied based on the social class of the guilty party. This means that if you are a landowner, your punishment will be less severe than if you did not own land. If you were a slave and committed an offense, then you received the harshest of punishments. The penalties were also based on who you hurt. If you were to kill a pregnant maidservant, then you would get a monetary fine. But if you were to kill a free pregnant woman, then your own daughter would be killed as retribution. Does that sound fair and equal? Something to think about, huh? Number three, there was a minimum wage. That sounds way ahead of its time, and it's a topical subject, but it's true. It is not quite the same as today, but certain occupations were listed in the code and were set to receive a minimum amount of money for the job performed. The more important the job was, that would be worth more money. A field laborer would get eight gur of corn, while a doctor would get five shekels for, dealing with, for healing a free man's bone. What do you think? Should minimum wage be based on occupation? No matter where you stand on that question, you have to admit that this idea was pretty progressive for the time we're talking about, you know, about 4,000 years ago. What about the question I asked at the beginning? Was Hammurabi's code the oldest written law in the world? Well, would you believe that there were at least two other examples of ancient codes before Hammurabi? The earliest example dates back to the 21st century BCE under the rule of ur Nemu of the city of Ur. There is also evidence that the code of Lipa Ishtar of e Isin was written down about 200 years before Hammurabi came to power. So what does that mean? Since Hammurabi's code is similar to the older ones, we can assume that Hammurabi was at least, at the minimum, at least influenced by the earlier codes. That's the problem with claiming to be the first of anything in history because the odds are that eventually earlier examples will be discovered. Nevertheless, Hammurabi's code has been remembered as an example of early law that was designed to be just. Leave a comment below telling you what you think about Hammurabi's code. Do you think it was fair? Let me know. And of course, while you're there, go ahead and hit that like button for me. You know, I love the engagement. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You know, if that button's red, let's turn it gray. And then be sure to check out my other videos, you know, like the ones you see on the side over here. 
I have other history videos, world history, US history. I even have civics videos. Some of my videos are even shot in 360, you know, the kind that you can look all the way around. So be sure to check them out because I know you're going to like them. For Virtual History 360, I'm Mr. Wade. I'll see you next time.